Our first stop, a drive to Monticello, the home of Thomas Jefferson, the drafter of the Declaration of Independence and the third president of the United States. Monticello is just a couple of miles southeast of Charlottesville. It sits in the center of what was a 5,000 acre estate he inherited when he was only 14. Jefferson loved its commanding views. He wrote, where has nature spread so rich a mantle under the eye? Mountains, forests, rocks, rivers. With what majesty do we there ride above the storms? He was often called down off his mountain into the storms of a nation emerging. Jefferson gave his heart and mind to creating a new nation and with equal enthusiasm transformed his beloved little mountain or Monticello into a grand estate worthy of a learned gentleman. The centerpiece is the home he designed in 1767 when he was just 24. Jefferson said, architecture is my delight and putting up and pulling down one of my favorite amusements. Monticello kept him amused for over 40 years as he incorporated new ideas he learned through reading and traveling. Jefferson uh, is going to spend 40 years building this house. In his mind, it is never finished. He says this house is a curiosity of the neighborhood, and he believes that architecture is a way of infusing art into this young country. As Peggy Mowbray showed us the home, we saw why she believes that it's the best biography of Jefferson. We started in the trophy room or entrance hall. It's full of mastodon teeth, maps drawn on buffalo hides, busts of famous figures, Indian peace pipes, mounted animal heads, and pre-Columbian statues from the Mississippi Delta. Jefferson is considered to be the father of modern archaeology. Jefferson believes that you can look at the past to learn about the future. This home shows his keen interest in learning. Jefferson spoke six languages and was passionate about science, art, agriculture, cooking, winemaking, and philosophy. He gave his vast collection of books to the United States to form the Library of Congress. He believed the country, like his home, would benefit from educated residents. Jefferson is a champion of education. He believes that uh, if the nation is not educated, we cannot maintain our freedom. But Jefferson wasn't perfect. He kept slaves. They did the hard work on his plantation. One, Sally Hemings, may have borne him a child. The slaves' homes and workshops were not preserved and none are buried alongside Jefferson and his family. Even the great have faults, but Jefferson did advance the cause of freedom for all.